Jeevan Zuchi found, founded the Indo-American Community Federation, a nonprofit in 1994. Um, in 1994, to pave the way for Indo-Americans to get involved in the mainstream activities. Um, it helps build Indo-US relations through educating lawmakers, organizing international seminars, and facilitating open dialogue with public officials in the US and in India. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to make it very brief because we have had such wonderful speakers, such wonderful, excellent presentations, and uh, and we have Mr. Sushil Pandit here, who is truly one of the one of the best historians, and uh, he's going to be speaking at uh, uh, the symposium, which is being organized by Kashmiri Overseas Association. And he's going to be speaking. He had jet lag and stuff, so he could not. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> I wouldn't be speaking. But I would. I, I will not take much of your time. Uh, it has been, you know, quite some time, and uh, you have shown a lot of patience. But I just would like to make few comments, uh, you know, about uh, after Article 370, a way forward. So. Uh, you know, you have heard speakers who touched upon the history and geopolitics of Kashmir. You heard about speakers talking about religious and cultural complexities of the area, and hopefully, you know, they clarified the impact and implications of the historical repeal of Article 370. And uh, my, you know, first thing that I'm, I'm going to talk about way forward is our, uh, uh, you know, the refugee population. And uh, you have already heard about it. I don't need to talk about Kashmiri Pandit refugees, you know, who uh, 350,000 of them who became refugees in their own country. And you heard the personal account, and it's very touching again, just all the wounds opened up. So I'm going to now focus on the second part, which is the cultural, economic, and uh, legal uh, progress. And uh, you know, we are hopeful that after the abrogation of these articles, uh, which provided special status to Jammu and Kashmir, uh, will result in expanded and equal opportunities, like uh, Dr. Shukran mentioned, and a chance for development of uh, religions like Ladakh, uh, which, uh, you know, some areas which have been neg neglected for far too long. In the post-370 era, I envision a society with greater accountability and uh, an intolerance for the corrupt practices. A society where all Kashmiris, <coughs> they can all come together, you know, including the majority Muslim community, the minority Hindus, Sikhs, and Buddhists, and they all fully enjoy the fruits of development and progress equitably. Additionally, I hope uh, to see the implementation of more progressive local laws which uh, shall empower women and provide a platform for their crucial voices. Again, it was already touched upon, so I don't need to go into that. So the third, uh, the third thing that I was going to speak about is the removal of these articles will help curtail terrorism in the valley. Proactive measures of added security, restrictions, and internet regulation placed by the government of India are crucial to countering terrorism and preventing the loss of civilian lives by militant groups. Therefore, a way forward will let the citizens create harmony and live within confines of law. Before I conclude, uh, I appeal to all our uh, fellow Kashmiris that we must promote pluralism in the state so that all communities can live together as they did before Pakistani trained militants created mayhem and forced Kashmiri Pandits to leave Kashmir Valley. <clears throat> Intra-Kashmiri dialogue exchange programs of students, writers, artists to offer their strengths in all the regions will definitely help in reconnecting and reintegrating hearts and minds of the people. And uh, you know we have a twofold request. First, we request that both direct and indirect sponsorship of terror from Pakistan stops. If the shadow of terror is lifted, the Indian government would not need to deploy 
a huge armed force in Kashmir. This would eliminate potential excesses from the Indian side that may affect ordinary civilians. And secondly, uh, it has been more than 30 years that Kashmir Task Force, in association with other organizations, we have been knocking at the doors of the US Congress to seek recognition of the exodus and plight of 350,000 Kashmiri partners. I think a formal statement after this briefing, we would like to get a formal statement and some form of legislation from the US Congress, which will be highlighting the ethnic cleansing which will be highlighting the ethnic cleansing of over 350,000 Kashmiri Hindu Pandits in 1989-1990 and endorsing the position of transforming the region by inclusivity and equality for all under a just legal framework. It would certainly be a monumental step in the way forward. We have not lost hope. I'm sure this will happen. Thank you very much. So next we're going to have Sanjeev Puri, who's going to be our last speaker. Um, Sanjeev Puri is recognized authority on U.S.-India relationships. He serves as the chairman of the U.S.-India Political Action Committee, a national bipartisan political action committee representing over 3.2 million Indian Americans. <laughs> 